I recently finished the latest episode of season one, which actually is the last episode of Dark Side of the Ring, entitled The Fabulous Moolah. Now, lately, you bring up her name and there's a lot of negativity surrounding the WWE Hall of Famer, one of the trailblazers in the women's, uh, women's uh, wrestling and someone who really was the only go-to back in her day when it came to women wanting to go and wrestle. They couldn't go anywhere else. If they decided that they didn't want to play ball with her, they didn't want to do what she says, if they left, that's it. No wrestling. So what happened to a wrestler named Princess Victoria, who actually broke her neck in the ring and they even showed it was like a, a move where it was like a sunset flip and someone sat on her head. You know, someone slipped and sat on her head and landed on her head. And she was even made to do bumps in the ring by Moolah and even told to go with a guy and uh, have sex. Make, you know, as according to her words, she says, make her feel good, you make her feel, you make, you make them, you uh, make them happy and then you get more money, something like that. And that is the point of the whole uh, controversy in regards to her. Women claiming that she pimped them out. They would have them, especially her husband, would uh, actually make, uh, he would actually have sex with the uh, the newest recruits, the newest trainees, it was like a requirement. And some of them said no, flat out. Even that Princess Victoria flat out said no, she actually made the guy go away. And in her words, it was so funny, she said that the man was not only beaten with the ugly stick, but she was beaten with the whole force. Pretty good uh, analogy there, pretty damn funny if you ask me. But uh, we all know uh, the newer, you know, the fans these days know Fabulous Mula from her time in the WWE. She was already pretty much a senior citizen and she was doing things that people her age shouldn't be doing because you're figuring that's just an old lady. He's a grandma, you know. I mean, how could she be doing that stuff? But her and Mae Young were so vital to the, you know, the whole women's division, the whole women's wrestling at the time when they were there because they were in it. Got Mae Young taking a, a, you know, table bump from Bubba Ray, from what twenty feet up, high, high up, you know, and Mula was getting you know bashed over the head with a guitar by Jeff Jarrett. But as soon as you know, we had the whole announcement of the women's battle royal in WrestleMania. They tacked, they tacked her name, tag, you know, they attached her name to it, and it was known as the Fabulous Moolah Memorial Battle Royal, much in the same vein as the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And as soon as that was announced, everybody who could get their access to it went online, found all of these supposed um, allegations that were, you know, that were leveled towards uh, Fabulous Mula. That she was pimping out her trainees, forcing them to have sex, drugging them, making them, you know, drink alcohol. And there's this one uh, wrestler known as Sweet Georgia Brown, who was one of those who claimed and actually relayed that, that same uh, accusation towards her kids. She told her kids. Yeah, she had a son who was a um, minister and another a daughter. And she told them, you know, that this stuff was happening. But then you had wrestlers that were vehemently not, you know, they were very much trying to clear her name and make, and not, you know, and let, not, let, not let all this uh, negativity, you know, towards Mula, you know, be the only thing they heard. You know, they were very much um, supporting her, defending her. She has a daughter, her only daughter, 
defending her. You have this ba- uh, wrestler known as Bambi. I remember her back in the day. Um, she, same thing. Um, you had uh, Leilani Kai, who was a former women's champion as well as a former WWE tag team champion back in the day when they, they had a tag team championships uh, way back in the early 70s, 80s, like that. So she was, you know, you know, I mean, you know, Sasha and uh, Bailey weren't the first ever. In this generation, they're the first ever tag team champions, but not ever. As, as much as WWE wants to tell you that they were the first. In this era, yeah, but not ever. But let's continue on with this. Um, she denied it as well. But who knows, you know, what is the truth in regards to Mula? Mula passed away and you even have some of these uh, women that are defending her saying that why is it that they waited till she died 11 years later when they d- decided to have the battle royal in 2018 and then all of a sudden all these accusations came out i never even knew about it not even a hint not even a uh you know a slight like you know hearing it whispered kind of a thing you know i never saw that on the internet i never saw any any, any kind, of kind of accusations but i guess Nowadays, of course, we know that everything is out there. You can find it, even going to the dark web, you know, if you have to, you'll find anything on some anybody, you know what I mean? That's why you gotta be uh, careful what you do, kids, you know, because you'll be found out, you know, no matter what, how how evil it is, or not how, how criminal it is, how, how petty it is, and even how small it is. Even if it's just you saying a curse word, you claim that you never curse and some will find it it's, it's, it's like that you know but uh i never heard of it i never heard and it was it surprised me because i was thoroughly entertained by mola i think she was great for the time that she was in wwe but if this is real and if there's some truth to it i mean i'm like it's it, it kind of does uh, taint her or you know her name a little bit but whatever side you take you know you're gonna believe you know well how do what do i how do i feel you know bill let me see the my, my thing is also that mula can't defend herself she can't say whether or not she did or she didn't i feel that the truth really is with her with her husband with you know the people that went through it some of them are gone now, you know, and they can't really say whether she did or didn't, didn't do it, you know. But it was very interesting, you know, this episode. It talked a lot about what Mula did. She was someone who was such a trailblazer, but there were some things that she did that you question why, you know, especially in regards to Wendy Richter. If everybody remembers the advent of MTV, it introduced rock and wrestling. A great combination, rock and wrestling, MTV, you know, and well, wrestling and MTV came together and created rock and wrestling, you know, with Cindy Lauper in the corner of Wendy Richter and, and Fabulous Mula having the, the great Lou Albano as her manager. And you saw, you know, them doing music videos with the Lopper, you know, the Goonies, right? And her story, uh, Wendy Richter, is so amazing. When you think about this lady, this young lady who was just like she first went to Mula, trained under Mula. She was actually her protege and her student. They even tag team together. Then one day decided, you know, they were going to do a angle where they both were going to wrestle and Mula's title was on the line and she apparently had the WWW probably F the three W's and the F uh, women's championship for like 26 years and they're talking about how there was like how two th- two generations of, of female wrestlers that never became champion because of her and this is amazing because she was the only one the only women's champion the only person to go to because women's wrestling at one point was banned. It was banned in uh, Madison Square Garden and they used this match as a way to introduce, you know, women's wrestling. And, you know, 
that's just that's just amazing. That's so unheard of because now if a woman can't be a champion in WWE, she'll go to AEW. If she can't be a champion there, she'll go to ROH. She'll go to Japan. You know, she'll go there. She'll go to Stardom. She'll go to, you know, all these uh, different promotions. But back then, there was only one person in charge, and that was Mula. So that's the reason why she had a stranglehold on that titles for so long. But nowadays, of course, like I said, so many, you know, different, you know companies that you can go to and become women's champion but if you didn't uh get become champion there you were never going to be champion there's a lot of great wrestlers that train under mula and pretty much she kind of held them down so people in there some ladies there are saying that it's because she was jealous because some were prettier some were you know they got they had you know they were better built i guess you could say they were better skilled and she didn't want them to be champion so it took mcmahon vince mcmahon jr which who is now we know as vince mcmahon you know, being able, being the one to uh, facilitate that match. And she beat her, uh, Wendy Richter did. One of the biggest moments in history, they even said that if she had really had a legit, very, very fair run with the title, she would have easily had made it more, you know, easier for the whole women's uh, revolution to really start then. I think it started then. For it, you know, to open doors for all these women, and she would have been a mega star because she was as big as Hogan when it comes to the females. But when she realized that she wasn't getting paid as much or even fairly, she voiced her opinion, and what they did was they, you know, they run and they made Mula dress in a, all black with a black with a black mask on, um, you know. And I remember this match. I remember seeing it as a kid. And they're saying that's Spider Lady. And when the director was like, I remember wrestling the Spider Lady, but she was she was smaller. And then when she gets pinned, and she actually wasn't pinned, she was pinned, her shoulders were down for one, but she kicked out, the referee kept counting. And then she pulls her mask off and it's Mula. And then um when the director was like, I want she wanted to find Vince McMahon because she said so she was gonna kill him. She was gonna beat him up because of what happened. And it's almost like that's like the even before the whole Shawn Michaels, uh, Bret Hart's, you know, Montreal screw job, there was a screw job between the Mola and, uh, you know, and uh, Wendy Richter. And it kind of ruined her career. She never really got, you know, to the heights of uh, where she was. It didn't really say it may have, but I may have done. I heard it, but, you know, you, you never, I never heard from her again, you know, and I was wondering, where is that grown girl that was like, you know, she beat Mola after First person to beat Mula, boom, beat Mula for the title after 26 years, and like she was never really heard from again. You know, she went to later would later be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, and like I said, you know, a lot of chicanery, a lot of you know, eye raising when it comes to what Mula has done. Look at the positive; she was a trailblazer. She you know, to pave the way for women after her. Because she was the one who allowed Madison Square Garden to lift their ban on women's wrestling. And then she may have or may have not have done the things that she's done, that she's being accused of. But there are, seems like there's an even amount of people that accuse her and people that are defending her. So who really knows, you know? It's all, you know, insinuation. It's all hearsay. And who knows what the truth is, but one of the women, the ones that even accused her, said that it was, it was actually um, Princess Victoria. She said, she said this clearly. She goes, it doesn't matter what she, she did. She was an asshole. That's what she said. But, you know, she, she was definitely, you have to definitely remember what she did and how, what she did for women's wrestling. You know, but, she, but then in the end, she said, well, she's still an asshole, but she did those things. We can't remember that. I mean, we can't forget that. And that's true. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, this, episode, this episode was really very, very interesting. I loved what I saw, uh, you know. And so it's an episode that really, really, like I said, just lays it out there. But then you're still wondering, did she do it? You know, but... Anyway, that was the last episode of the season, first season, and I'll be going, getting into the second season. I know that they recently 
release the Brett Dolman Hart one. And I so much want to see that, but I'm doing this week to week until I get to it. And I already did, uh, which actually the first one was, and I thought it was a documentary. I didn't really know it was a series, but I did the Chris Benoit one, and it actually is on my channel. I did a review on it, and I'll put the link up so those of you who see this video will check that out as well. But, uh, well, you know, that's my uh, my thoughts on Dark Side of the Ring, Episode 6, entitled The Fabulous Moolah. She entertained the heck out of me when she was in WWE in her later years and the amazing stuff that she did. You know, I can't forget that. But then it's also shrouded in, you know, controversy because of what she allegedly did back in her heyday. But that's all that's that, you know, and uh, for those of you who stopped by and checked out this video, I appreciate it. And in closing, and as always, take care. Please remember to subscribe, click like, and click the bell icon for all the notifications on this channel.